Data Version Control. Data Version Control is a command line tool written in Python. It mimics Git commands and workflows to ensure that users can quickly incorporate it into their regular Git practice. Data Version Control is meant to be run alongside Git. While Git is used to store and to version code, DVC does the same for data and model files. Git can store code locally and also on a hosting service like GitHub, Bitbucket, or GitLab. DVC uses a remote repository to store all your data and models. You can get a local copy of the remote repository, modify the files, then upload your changes to share with the team members. The remote repository can be on the same computer you are working on, or it can be in the cloud. DVC supports most major cloud providers, including AWS, GCP, and Azure. But you can set up a DVC remote repository on any server and connect it to your laptop. Part number one, set up your Python environment. For this tutorial, we have these repository files. This is how project structure is organized and main purposes of each part. These Python files perform some subtask of machine learning, which is not the main topic of this video. Today we will mainly touch data files, which are bordered here. We will cover that in a minute. Make sure your terminal is active on the same repository directory. And also, here is the remote repository for our project in GitHub. What we need to do before all the things is to create a new Python environment. The name of the Conda environment will be DVC. Python version that I will use is 3.8.2. The environment will be set up in a few seconds. Environment is created successfully. Let's activate it now. Activate it. Now we can start to work. You can set the name of the environment DVC right here. It's a good time to install models and packages into our environment. For our machine learning project, we will install DVC, scikit-learn, scipy image, pandas, and numpy. For this tutorial, we will use DVC only. However, install all of them to complete set up our environment. All dependencies successfully installed and the environment is prepared. So, clear the terminal and move on. The last action in this part is to get some data for a data version task. Here is it. Inside data raw directory, we have training and validation datasets. We can quickly check it right here. And here, directly in the terminal. We can see that all the data is on these places. That is good for us. Part number two. Hands on the basics DVC workflow. Keep staying in your terminal and let's create a new branch in our Git repository. Let's name it First Experiment. The branch is created and all what we will do now, everything will be on this branch. We will push changes we will make for data version to this branch. The first step in DVC, initiate our local data versioning repository. Let's do it now with DVC in it. This will create a .dvc folder that holds configuration information, just like the .git folder for git. Also, we need some kind of remote storage for data and model files controlled by DVC. This can be as simple as another folder on your system. Create a folder somewhere on your system outside the project files. Let's name it storage as DVC remote. We need to get a full path to remote storage to specify it into our DVC system. Here is it. 
come back to terminal and tell DVC where the remote storage is on your system. For this purpose, you should use DVC remote storage command in your terminal. So, here we need to paste the full path to the remote storage. So here on the left is our remote storage and here on the right is DCV which will find it. Now DVC knows where our remote storage is located. Perfect. Now we can check what files and folders do we have in our project. This is new .dvc folder. Uh, let's open the secret folder directly from the terminal right now. Inside we have config and temp files. Let's open config file. As you can see, here we can see where our remote storage is exactly located. Now do we see 100% knows where to pull or cache the actual or historical data. Come back to our repository files right now. Now we need to think how to add our actual training and validation sets into DVC for tracking. Here is the data folders which need to be tracked with DVC. We will use commands similar like in git. git add and the related path to the data folder at the end. It seems my terminal location should be one level up. Let's quickly come back on one level up now. Now everything is in correct places and we can start tracking our data. Firstly, do it for training data in our project files. This data is adding to DVC right now. It's still processing. Let's wait a few seconds until it will be completed. Remote storage is almost ready to track the training data. Here you go, DVC now is able to track changes in our training data. Now take a look, we have a new DVC file which saves information about changes in training data. What are DVC files? DVC files is .dvc are placeholders to track data files and directories. Let's open and take a look what is inside. Let's move it in the middle of the screen. Here you can see some interest data, size of data count of files, a path and MD5 decryption. What is MD5 in DVC? It is hash value for the file or directory being tracked with DVC. MD5 is used for most location, ETAG for HTTP, S3 or Azure external outputs and a special checksum for HDFS and Web HDFS. Let's do the same for validation data. Here's the actual validation data folder in the project folder structure. So, let's add validation data folder to the DVC in the same way right now. Adding the actual data into the most storage now. Adding validation data to DVC for tracking is completed now. Here's the new DVC file for validation data. Let's open this DVC file and take a look inside. Let's move it into the middle of the screen. As you can see, we have 1861 samples of validation data right now. So far so good. Now it's a good time to push something into GitHub. Just keep in mind that we have two kinds of controls. DBC control and git control. Each control has its own components such when you run dvc add train, the folder with large files goes under dvc control. The train folder also goes into staging area or cache. You can add all the code and small files to the git control. This can be done with git add command, just like that. As you can see in the schema, large files goes into dvc control. dvc add transfer dvc information to the local git control. This is why we create two dvc files for both training and validation data. 
Similar logic is for small files. While large image files goes under DVT control, small files goes under Git control. If someone wants to work on your project and use the train and validation data, then they would the first need to download your Git repository. Before people can get your repository and data, you need to upload your files to remote storage. This is why we are doing this git commit right now. As you can see, with this commit, we are passing new DVC and config files for DVC control to git. DVC doesn't need a snapshot for a whole repository. It can just upload individual files as soon as they attract with DVC add. So push everything to the GitHub repo now. Transferring files still. Done. 7149 files pushed. Now it's a good time to check our remote storage. If you expand this remote storage folder, you can see all files corresponding to your training and validation datasets. Once your data is now safely stored in a location away from your repository, we can push the files under git control to GitHub. GitHub doesn't know about the new branch you created locally, so the first push need to use the set upstream option. Well done, all your files have been backed up in the most storage. Let's quickly check our branch first experiment. Here's it. Here's the .dvc folder for our dvc system. Remember this config file we checked locally? This file provides the information about our remote data storage. Till now we made a lot of important action. Let's jump to the last part. Let's simulate one real life situation. Let's assume we have just a part of data and we need to pull data from DVC remote. To illustrate this situation, I delete this bunch of data. Clear the terminal to make everything as simple as possible. To get your data back from the cache, use the DVC checkout command. Do not forget to specify the required DVC file corresponding to the data you want to retrieve. Let's take a look into this DVC file one more time. You can see from this file that we expect to have 1861 data files as validation data. Everything is in place. We can move to the left this file now. Fine. Let's try this checkout comment right now. Typing error. Let's fix it very quickly. Only one character. And the data is updating directly from our remote storage right now. As you can see on the project data folder, the new data successfully retrieved from remote storage. Again, here's our remote storage and how it looks like. We need to confirm for some system files which do not make any sense for us. And the process is finished. Additionally, there are access to our commands to update data from DVC remote. For example, DVC fetch. Again, specify the required DVC file and it should work. Also, DVC pool can do all the work for you. It's processing, building data object, and once we have all fresh data, we get a message that everything is up to date. This is the finish line of the lesson number one about data version control. The second lesson will be about the with integration to machine learning project. Subscribe to the channel to get it first.